Good morning. I'm just about to do the most important part of my round today. So with a tube of balls, I'm going to warm up with the 7-iron. So I've picked a part target out here on the practice ground. I've put a club down so I can get parallel to it. So at least I know I'm aiming the correct way. And I've also put a head cover down to remind me that I need to get this club out wide and not round the back side. But this is the most important part of my round. Well, the warm up isn't just about stretching a few muscles, it's about trying to find out what have we got today and making those very small corrections that we need before we go to the golf course. You know, has your standard two and a half knuckle grip turned into a one and a half knuckle grip since last week? What's the ball flight? Can we make some very small adjustments before we go to the course? It's certainly easier here than on the course when you're trying to make a score. So 20 balls should be sufficient to achieve that. Now the camera is offset. It's not behind the ball, it's most certainly not behind me. So the angles that you are looking at are not the same angles I'm looking at as I hit the ball. notice I'm using a tee peg. Well nowhere in the rules of golf or practice etiquette does it say you must make it as hard as possible for you. I'm more than happy to hit off a tee peg. I use a seven iron because I'm confident with the club. The ball's going to go up but it's straight faced enough to show me side spin. If I start with a wedge and I'm coming over the top, adding loft, slicing it, all it's going to do is go higher. It's not going to show me the side spin. And we really do need to see that when we're warming up. All I'm doing here is reacting to the ball flight and what I know about my own swing, my own faults, my own grip. I'm making tiny adjustments here, as well as stretching out the muscles and getting a feel for the swing. That one's a big over the top with a close face and I pulled it. So why am I doing this? I could just stay in bed a bit longer and go straight to the first tee. Well, if you don't do this, the first four or five holes of your round today is your driving range. And if you're hitting slices and pulls, you're losing balls, you're racking up your score. I want to give myself the best chance of enjoying the hobby that I love. And to do that, it means just turning that alarm clock back one hour. The thing to remember is this is not a practice session, it's just 20 balls. I don't have a hundred balls here. So I can take my time, run through my usual routine, although I can cut the routine a fraction short by having a club on the ground. This doesn't take a long time. You don't need to set the alarm that early in order to be able to do this. And it is essential for good golf. I mean, wouldn't you want to hit your rubbish here and not over there on the first tee, then the second and the third and the fourth? Get rid of the rubbish here. What I'm trying to do is work out 
how's my takeaway going today? And you know how bad my takeaway is. How's my grip? Is my grip right? Because every day you get out of bed, it's slightly different. So is my grip right? Is my speed correct? Am I turning properly? Can I actually produce in these 20 balls some decent shots? And then go to the first tee with confidence. So this is the first part of warming up. 27 irons. The next stop is the chipping green. This time of year, when we've gone from a wet period now to a dry period, and the greens are getting cut and rolled, everything's changed. So the first four balls are quite simply, how is it bouncing? Am I getting some spin? How far is it rolling out? And by observing, we can then adjust our feel. We can develop some feel. Now, if you chip quite often, you don't need to hit many balls to be able to do that. It's only when you don't chip at all that you're going to have to do this a lot. I can spend five minutes round this green and that is all I need to see what my feel is for the day. So now we've watched what the ball is doing, now we can pick a target to do it to and see if we've got it right. And all we're trying to do is roll it up there inside four feet and that's the job done. Yeah, this isn't particularly difficult to do and it doesn't take a long time to do. But if you're going to have any chance on the golf course, then you have to do it. And as I say, the more often you do it, the less you have to do. Now, while things are firming up, we need to see how the club interacts with the ground, especially a sand wedge where you've got more bounce on the bottom of it. So this is all I'm going to do. I'm going to feel what the back of the club is doing with the ground. And by doing this, and I don't need to do a lot, I'll be prepared when I've got something like this out on the golf course. I know what's going to happen. I know how firm the ground is going to feel at impact. And even though I'm not particularly aiming at a flag here, I am looking to hit all of these about the same distance. And there we go, a nice little grouping. Our last port call is the putting green, of course. Get the flag out of the way. I measure off roughly a club and a grip, about 44 inches. So all I'm going to check is if I've got a decent speed for holding out and whether my stroke is a bit wobbly or not. If all of these go in, i got nothing to worry about. If I'm missing, then I'm going to have to work on it a bit.
I wouldn't have to worry too much about lagging, except for the greens have changed dramatically. So I've wandered out here in excess of 40 feet. It's uphill, there's a hell of a lot of brake on this. I'm not too worried about the brake. All I'm looking to do is zone in on the speed of the green today. Then when I get out on the course, something like this won't bother me. Wow, there is a lot of brake. I wasn't quite expecting that much. But it's the speed I'm more interested in. That's a little better. That's three feet past. It looks further because the camera's zoned in on the hole. But it is only three feet. Two more chances. That's better. That's what I'm looking for. This warm-up has taken 40 minutes max. Now we're ready. Now I'm ready to play. And so will you be. This is how you get the most out of this exceptionally expensive hobby. It's to actually do the best you can to do the best you can. Cheerio.